something that we haven't done for a really long time here on the channel. We're going on a trip because Germany Tourism has invited us to visit two cities in Germany. First, Visit Berlin will welcome us in Berlin and then in next week's video, we're going to Bremen where Visit Bremen will welcome us. So we're going to keep Bremen to the next video and focus on Berlin in this one. And uh, we're very excited to go and we first need to get there. Right now we're in Malmö Central Station. It's pretty late at night. It's probably the latest I've ever started a video. It's 9.30 and we're waiting for or Snelltoget, which is a direct train which will take us from Malmö all the way to Berlin overnight so that we can just sleep the whole way and um, get there rested hopefully and uh, ready to enjoy the city for the day. This is the only direct train that connects Sweden to Germany. It's a really great sustainable way of traveling of course and we're looking forward to getting into our compartment, getting snuggly and falling asleep. So uh, I think we should just hop on the train and see what it's like. Snelltoget actually goes all the way from Stockholm to Berlin and it does stop on a few places in Sweden before it reaches Malmö and then when you cross the border to Germany it also stops in Hamburg. So there are plenty of places to hop on the train and then get off in either Hamburg or Berlin depending on what you're after in Germany. We thoroughly enjoyed looking out the window as we left Malmö, but then we thought it's time to start making our beds. And the compartments on Snelltoget actually sleep six people in one compartment, which is a very snug fit. I have done this previously, but luckily Rob and I had our own compartment and we just made the two lower beds and then we got tucked in for a good sleep. of sleep we woke up to the morning light and beautiful scenery passing by the window and we went to pick up some breakfast you can order breakfast in advance on Snelltoget unfortunately we didn't get the vegan option as we thought we would so we just had some juice and some tea but it was very nice to have a hot drink and look out the window to start the day sleep on the night train on Snelltoget and uh, I didn't sleep maybe quite as much as I would do in my own bed which is expected. It was a little bumpy, a little noisy, a whole new environment which obviously always throws off my sleep at least um, but it was thoroughly enjoyable. It's very cozy in here, it's very snug and uh, it's very nice to wake up with this ever-changing view outside the window and knowing that soon you'll be uh, getting to a fun destination. I think this weighs up for the lack of sleep a little bit and uh, we're excited for the day and I think that uh, that is such a nice thing to be able to sleep during your journey and have a whole day in front of you when you arrive. So we're looking forward to just getting off the train into what looks like pretty dreary weather. Unfortunately, it's rainy at the moment. We hope that will stop because today we're going on a city tour, probably on a bike, which is something new to us. So yeah, we look forward to that. It looks like we're going into a tunnel, so I think I better say bye for now. <laughs> As we rolled into Berlin, we caught a glimpse of the ever so famous TV tower, and then we arrived at Berlin Hauptbahnhof, which is the central station in Berlin. And then we set out to find the tourist center because we wanted to pick up our Berlin welcome cards, which basically gives you a lot of discounts on attractions, and it also covers public transport and a ride on the hop on, hop off tourist bus. Basically, it's a great way to be able to do a lot of fun stuff, visit museums and attractions around Berlin without breaking the bank. 
We used our tickets to get to our hotel, which was called Lulu Guldsmeden. It's part of the Guldsmeden family of hotels that comes from Denmark, and it has a sustainability focus. So all of the sheets and towels were made from organic cotton. There was sharing bottles of shampoo, etc. And even the key cards were made from bamboo. They also work directly with artisans in Bali who make their furniture and their beautiful art as well. We feel like new people after a nice hot shower here in our hotel room. And I definitely think I'm going to sleep really good in this bed tonight. It's super soft and cozy. And uh, this hotel in general is very nice. It's got like a bohemian feel to it. I think it's a little bit inspired by Bali interiors. Uh, I can hear our neighbors. I hope you can't. Anyways, now we're going to head out into the city finally. We're going to go on our bike tour, which is a sustainability tour of the city. We don't know much more than that, but yeah, we're just going to head out and see what it's like. So let's go. To get to the re-bike store where we were meant to meet our guide, we hopped on the U-Bahn, which is the equivalent of a subway that actually is built in many places above ground. And when we exited our stop, we saw this shop that I've been wanting to visit for a long time. It's called Halish's House. It offers beautiful ceramics and homewares, pots for plants, and some specialty food items and hygiene products as well. And it also has a very beautiful cafe with vegan options. So that's a little tip. Finally, we made our way to the Rebike store where we met our guide Emil from Green Bike Tours and we got kitted out with bikes because this is where our sustainability tour around Berlin started and we talked a lot about the different goals Germany and Berlin has when it comes to sustainability. We also learned about the specific issues Berlin is facing when it comes to this topic and it was very interesting to see the city from this different perspective. Having been there many times before, this was something I had never done previously. Finally, we made our way to a place called the Holtzmarkt, which is a really interesting creative space. It sits right by the river Spree, and it's a place where you can see a lot of interesting artwork commenting on our culture of trash. And it also has some eateries and bars and a lot of outdoor seating space. As in many other areas of Berlin, you can also see some beautiful street art on the walls. And it has a lovely seating area next to the water where I'm sure it would be lovely to spend some time in the summer. We then continued our tour on two wheels and we actually made our way towards some food related stops. And the first one we went to was Markthalle 9, which is a food market or a food court that is one of the few that stands after the Second World War. And they have a lot of sustainability programs at this food court. And it also has some really lovely little specialty food stores, market stalls, bakers, and you name it, it's pretty much there. and I kept cycling around for a few hours and we kept stopping in places where Emil had something interesting to tell us about or something that we could discuss and I like this part of the tour that we actually had conversations as we cycled around and our next stop was original unverpacked I think it's pronounced it's a um, package free store I think one of the first in Berlin and it's a great place to stock up on some basics or some uh, fun products that maybe you can't find in your own hometown. It also marked the end of our tour which would normally go on to Tempelhoferfeld but you'll have to check out one of my other posts to read more about that. So we just finished our bike tour and what I really liked about it was that it was a mixture of information about sustainability uh, in Berlin in particular and sustainability at large. So lots of information and facts, but also some practical information like different shops that might be of interest to you here in Berlin that have a more sustainability focus. 
and uh, yeah, it gives a good overview of uh, sustainability within Berlin. And um, what I also really liked about it is that if you've been here many times before and you've done a lot of other things like maybe history tours uh, and things like that, then it's fun to see the city from a different perspective and have a different take on it and uh, see some other sites that aren't necessarily the main tourist attractions, uh, but are interesting all the same. And now we're going to head back to the hotel and rest a little bit. And then we're going to head out for dinner tonight and it's going to be a real experience. I think it's going to be a cocktail bistro called Bon Vivant and we're very excited. So first little rest and then out to dinner. At Bon Vivant we met Joyce which had kindly put together the program for this trip for us and we were in store for a really lovely evening at a really lovely spot. The guys were wonderful showing us around the restaurant before the food started rolling in. And you can get a four or six course menu at Bon Vivant along with a drinks pairing. Bon Vivant is a cocktail bistro so instead of wine pairings they do drinks and they actually had a really great non-alcoholic pairing which I had and I definitely recommend it. With local produce and was very vegetable centric. Bon Vivant is actually a vegetarian restaurant but they do their menus vegan as well and I would have believed them if they told me it was a vegan place because it was really yummy and they even had delicious gluten-free bread which is lucky because one of the courses is completely centered around bread which I think is great because Germans definitely do love their bread. The whole evening we enjoyed a view of the kitchen from our table as they kept bringing out yummy dishes and lovely drinks. One of their favorite dishes was a crispy Jerusalem artichoke with a vegan beurre blanc and some pickles. We also had a yummy potato dish which was very spring inspired with wild garlic and the dessert was also really yummy. It had a rooibos tea espuma which is like a foam that went with a beet ice cream and it was heaven. Following the last little nightcap, we almost rolled back to the hotel and were definitely ready for a sleep. morning we continued our eating marathon with the breakfast at the hotel and unfortunately they hadn't been notified that we were vegan and they're actually changing their concept when it comes to their kitchen but we still had a really yummy and really special breakfast experience at the hotel. The hotel is cooked to order which is a lovely touch and they kept bringing out more and more things. There were even vegan croissants, some lovely cooked greens like spinach and green beans, a potato salad, bread of course and some little yogurt pots. We were definitely fueled well for another day in the city. It's a new day here in Berlin and basically what we've done mainly since I spoke directly to you last time is a lot of eating which is one of my favorite things to do when traveling. I love food experiences and yesterday at Bon Vivant was uh, super lovely. All the food was yummy and uh, it was really interesting with the drinks pairing with the food. Bon Vivant is actually a bistro, like a cocktail bistro, so they focus a lot on their drinks. And they even had a non-alcoholic, um, uh, how do you say, a pairing with the set menu. That was really interesting. I've never had an experience like that before. Usually the non-alcoholic drinks are not at all as creative as the alcoholic drinks when you're doing sets like that. But this was uh, very good and super interesting. Things I've never tasted before. 
and uh, the atmosphere is also really lovely there. It was buzzy and the interior is lovely, which you saw. Uh, so I definitely recommend going there if you're coming to Berlin and you want to have a food experience uh, uh, with drinks. And uh, now this morning we've just been down to the hotel restaurant to have some breakfast and they actually whipped up a really lovely vegan um, breakfast for us. Lots of veggies which uh, I'm not super used to eating at hotels for breakfast so I was very happy and it was cooked fresh for us which is also really nice. They also had lovely tea and juice and coffee. Rob really liked his coffee which is not always the case at hotels so I think that's a good sign. And now we're going to head out. We're going to the gardens of the world. Uh, which is about an hour from our hotel, so we'll be on a train for a little bit and um, then we're going to explore some gardens and there's a cherry blossom festival there uh, today and tomorrow I think, so we're going to explore that too. It's one of the most beautiful things in spring, so I'm very excited to see it and of course we'll take you along, so I think we should just get dressed and get out into the city. <laughs> We started our days at the Gardens of the World with a cable car ride and I must say I was pretty scared because it was very windy on the day we went there and they actually closed it down after we got up. But when you get up there it's really lovely and there's a lookout point which is a structure that's called the cloud which is actually not part of the entrance fee to the Gardens of the World but you can walk down from there and enter the park with the different gardens inspired by different parts of the world. World. The walk takes you through a wooded area and when you enter you pretty much go straight into the Chinese garden which was one of our favorites. There were signs of spring and during our visit it was actually a Japanese cherry blossom festival so we enjoyed looking at all the beautiful blooming trees and then we walked down to the Middle Eastern inspired garden which was our other favorite. We loved all the tiles of the plaza, there were water, fountains and uh, beautiful structures as well as plants. Although I think this would be even nicer if you visit a little bit later when things are more in bloom. Once we had walked around the gardens a little bit, we checked out the stage where they had a lot of events for the Japanese festival and then we checked out also the food market which was there because of the festival and we had some onigiri, we actually had three different versions that were vegan and we also had some kimchi tacos. Normally at the park, the restaurants don't have that many vegan options, but I have been told that there is a Balinese restaurant that has a yummy vegan soup. After our lunch in the sun, we headed back into the city to visit the vegan supermarket Vegans. We visited the branch in Friedrichshain, if I'm pronouncing that area correctly, and we got all the vegan treats. This is a great store with so many vegan products. I definitely recommend a visit if you're vegan or if you're vegan curious. The wind has really kicked up here in Berlin, as you can probably see in my hair. And um, we've uh, been to Gardens of the World, walked around, enjoyed the sights. And I will say that I think it would be better to go there in the middle of the summer. And maybe if you've uh, been to Berlin many times before, uh, it's nice to go. Because it is a little bit of a um, journey to get out there. It took us about 50 minutes on public transport. But it is a very enjoyable uh, walk around the 
apartment, like I said, in the summer, or even a little bit later in spring, like in a few weeks, I think it will be like peak time to go there when everything's in blue. Um, but yes, we also took the cable car up to the viewing point, and I will say that was a little bit scared because it is, like I said, pretty windy today, but it's a fun thing to do. I think especially if you're a family coming here and have kids, they would love it there. And we also had a little bit of lunch there in their food stalls. I hope you could hear me. We had a little bit of lunch there in their food stalls. And now we've come back into the parts of the city that we know better. So we're now in Neukölln and we're going to walk and meet our guide who's going to take us for a vegan food tour, which of course we're very excited for. And it's going to be a few hours of walking, checking out cool places and eating lots of good food. So uh, yeah, let's go and do it. Before we met our guide, we actually needed some liquid refreshments after a long day. So we stopped off at a bakery that we saw and it's called Gorilla. And they had the most yummy kombucha there, which is called Bush, I think. So if you catch a glimpse of that, definitely get it. And then we headed down into another street in Neukölln to meet our guide Holger. And along with him, we walked down to a little neighborhood not known to many called Richard Kitts where there's a lot of old buildings that survived the war that's really interesting and I'm very glad he took us there because there's a restaurant there called Aviv 030 which is an Israeli restaurant with a lovely interior, yummy drinks and delicious food. As we were on a food tour and there was a lot of food to come, we didn't order too much, but we had their delicious mushrooms that's super savory, along with their creamy hummus and a grilled cabbage dish that was so interesting with lots of herbs and tahini. After we had enjoyed the lovely food and atmosphere at Aviv, we caught the U-Bahn to go to Kettles for a Berlin classic. I'm talking about currywurst, of course, which is a combination of sausage, a savory tomato sauce and curry powder. This was invented in Berlin, it's a very special combination and at this place they have a delicious vegan version. It was actually my first time trying it and I did really enjoy it. It's not gluten free though, so to all my gluten free friends, this one's not for you. Next up, we headed to Tsutsu, which is a Japanese place serving a Japanese speciality called karage. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that one right either, but we started off with some drinks and then we tried their Japanese vegan fried chicken. Again, this is not gluten free, but it was very yummy and definitely worth a try if you're into fried food. We then continued on our tour and our guide Holger was so knowledgeable about the city, told us so many things before we hit up our final stop, Goldie's, which is all about french fries, especially if you're vegan. They have three vegan top versions and they're all delicious. Our favorite was the truffle one, but the beetroot one was definitely a close second. So it's very late right now and we just got back from the most fun walking tour I've ever been on uh, with uh, fork and walk tours here in Berlin and this is much thanks to our lovely guide for the evening Holger which you've seen now in um, in the footage he showed us four places uh, where they offer vegan food here in Berlin all with a little bit of a different touch as you saw as well we started with an Israeli restaurant. Apparently Israeli food is like on the up here in Berlin and uh, that place was very sort of Berlin chic, I would say. <laughs> very nice interior, atmosphere, very yummy food and great for vegans. Then we moved on to have a Currywurst, I think I'm saying that okay, which is like a Berlin special. Then we tried something completely different, like a Japanese style fried chicken, uh, which was super cool, like a little hole in the wall place. And then we finished off walking through Oranienstraße. I'm trying to do my best German here, <laughs> which is like, um, like a really bussy uh, street in the evening, lots of bars and restaurants. 
and uh, we went to Goldie's, which uh, is a place that specializes in like fried food, but does it with a twist. So it's a lot about French fries, especially if you're vegan going there, the French fries is the thing to have. And the, the way they make it special is, of course, by adding different toppings. So uh, we had one which had uh, some marinated beetroot and things like that, and one with vegan mayo and truffle. And it really was a food experience experience was very fun and then we finished off with a uh, like Berlin touch of Berlin nightlife we went to a bar called Roses which for me was really fun it's something I've always wanted to do is to have like a Berlin nightlife experience I've been here many times and crazily enough I've never been to like a proper Berlin uh, bar or like a club or something like that but unfortunately we couldn't film in there but a, a, a tip is to go there for the experience it's a little crazy place <laughs> with furry walls and super kitsch and super fun and actually very friendly atmosphere i will say for that reason i think uh, berlin is really nice and now we must have a good sleep because it's going to be short <laughs> and then tomorrow we go on to bremen but uh we will take you with us for breakfast on our last morning here and then we'll see you in the next video but yes sleep and then we'll see you in the morning good morning from our last morning here in berlin as you can see the wind is still staying strong <laughs> and we're up with the rooster we made it to the train station again because today we travel to bremen or Bremen, as I think is a more correct way of saying it in German. And yeah, we've had a lovely stay here in Berlin. We wish it was longer. There's so much to see and do in Berlin, as I'm sure many of you already know. There's lots of history to explore here, lots of art and nightlife, of course, which we haven't covered so much in this video. Uh, but we hope you've enjoyed seeing what we get up to. And many thanks to Visit Berlin for organizing this trip and the schedule for us. And I will leave a link to a blog post or a website post down below for you where uh, everything will be linked. There will be more information about what we've been doing. And uh, I've written a few blog posts about Berlin before. So if you're looking for more vegan places to eat here, then I will link some posts for that down below as well. And now I uh, am going to go in and uh, see if we can find some breakfast to eat here in the station. Which we definitely did. The best place we found was called Work. And we got some vegan birch and muesli, some nice tea with soy milk, and a yummy avocado sandwich. We also found some more onigiri in the station. It seems to be a thing in Berlin. And then we hopped on our train and started our journey. So uh, the next time you see us, we will be in Bremen showing you around there and we're very excited. But first, I think a little snooze on the train <laughs> is in order. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.